Hey everyone, Hack Luke here. Today we are going to be walking through a bug on the Shopify program that was recently disclosed that paid out a whopping 50,000 US dollars. So first we'll go through the actual bug and you know how it worked technically and uh, you know the, the potential impact to Shopify the organization. And then we'll go through kind of the thought process that the researcher likely had while they were investigating the bug and also uh, how you might be able to find similar bugs either on the same program or a different program in future. Now, this is a, a type of video that I've been wanting to do for a while now. It's great for me because these videos are quite easy to put out regularly, and I think that they'll provide a lot of value to the community, but I'm not sure. So if you do enjoy this video, if you get something out of it, hit that like button um, and leave a comment letting me know, or you can DM me on Twitter or whatever. Just let me know that you like it. And if I get some good feedback from this video, I'll make a stack more of them because uh, I can probably push one of these out every couple of days, I reckon. So um, yeah, let me know. Let's dive straight into the HackerOne report. So I was actually looking through Hacktivity about, um, you know, five, 10 minutes ago. And this stood out to me mostly because of the bounty amount, which is absolutely nuts, um, but also because it was on the Shopify program and the Shopify security team and the Shopify bug bounty program is exceptional. Um, I've, I've had a few dealings with them and like every time I've just been super impressed by their, their professionalism, response time, um, their, their expertise, like the security expertise and, and everything. So super impressed. And um, you'll see that in the way that they handled this report as well. So the researcher was someone called Augusto Zanilato. And um, you can see they have 157 reputation and you start with 100. So uh, they, they obviously haven't done a whole lot of hacking on HackerOne. Not that that actually means anything about the hacking ability, just means they haven't submitted that many reports on HackerOne. But I just think it's super funny to note because you know they've probably submitted two bugs and uh, they've earned like $50,000. <laughs> So um, very good, very good hit rate for Augusto. So congrats, Augusto, that's awesome. Uh, if you wanna check this report, by the way, and, and go through it with me, you can do it by clicking the link in the video description too. Um, so you can see from the title, roughly what the video is gonna be about, the, it's a GitHub access to token exposure, which is a pretty standard bug, um, often quite critical but um, easy to find. In this case, uh, the actual method that Augusta used to find it was, I thought, really interesting. Um, and there must have been some luck involved here because um, it was like it was like a far-fetched way to find uh, something related to Shopify, as you will see. So first we're gonna read uh, the summary by Shopify as it's their program. So it says, on January 26th, Augusto Zanilato reported that while reviewing a public macOS app, they found a valid GitHub access token belonging to a Shopify employee. If you don't know what a GitHub access token is, a personal GitHub access token, you can check it out in the GitHub docs. But basically, I've got it right here. Um, we're talking about personal access tokens here, sometimes referred to as PATs, and um, they're an alternative to using passwords for the GitHub API or command line. So essentially, when you use the GitHub API or um, a command line, a GitHub command line utility, you wouldn't use your GitHub password, your normal GitHub password. Instead, you would first need to log into the GitHub app, generate a personal access token, and then you can use that personal access token to use the GitHub API or the command line. So in this case, um, the way that they found it was super random. Um, fr from what's written in the report, it sounds like Augusto was basically just surfing the web and found this random Mac OS app um, to download on, on a website. And um, the developer of that Mac OS app, although the actual app wasn't related to Shopify in any way, apparently, um, the developer of the app also worked for Shopify. So there was some relation there. Um, and what happened was they downloaded this Mac OS app and they extracted the DMG. And if you don't know what a DMG is, it's a file extension type of file that, um, that you typically download um, Mac, Mac OS apps in. So it's kind of like the equivalent to like a Windows installer. Um, and 
they extracted the files because the DMG is kind of like a zip file. You can just like, uh, it's, it's just like a, a packaged, uh, a package of all different files that make up the application. In this case, um, he extracted it and then he found this app.asar file within there. And um, an app, uh, an ASAR file um, basically tells you that this application uses something called Electron. Um, as they've said here. So Electron is a, uh, a kind of a framework that allows you to package front-end applic uh, like web applications uh, into native applications that are cross-platform. So you can have Electron application, you can write an Electron application and then you can package it for like Mac and Windows and Android and uh, iPhone and, and everything. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty like, uh, it's a pretty cool thing to learn because um, if you're into like web development, you can also develop native applications, which is super cool. Um, so if you've ever used Slack, Discord, um, VS Code, they're all Electron applications, right? In this case, the the app.asar file had uh, had some things in there that shouldn't have been there. Um, so you can extract an ASAR file. Again, it's kind of like a DMG in that you can extract it and view the files within it. And that's exactly what the researcher did here. So um, they used a utility called NPX, which is basically for, uh, it, it's used for packaging ASAR files, but you can also use it to extract the files back out of a package. Um, and they extracted it, and then they found a file within the ASAR called .env. And a .env file, um, the env stands for environment. So what's inside it is typically environment variables. And uh, in this case, one of the environment variables was gh underscore token. And of course, the value of that variable was a GitHub token, a personal access token of the developer that created the app. Why did they have the GitHub token in the app? No idea. Um, it seems really, really strange, um, but it does say somewhere in this report, I, I saw that um, apparently the .env file wasn't even used by the app. At least um, the researcher didn't, didn't find anywhere that, that, that the .env file was even used. So it may have been left over from some kind of deployment, like uh, something he was doing for work or who knows. Um, but somehow the .env file ended up packaged along with the, with the whole application. Anyway, when the researcher discovered this GitHub token, they thought, okay, I am going to basically see what this, this access token actually has access to. You can read here. Um, as you can probably guess, I tried using it to authenticate against the GitHub REST API using um, this command. This is the call, com call command that um, they used to check the personal access token was legitimate. And um, they saw that the token was indeed valid. So they decided to hit the slash user slash orgs API endpoint, which um, will tell you what organizations that access token has access to. And uh, it says that he got back, among others, the Shopify organization, which must have been uh, a crazy moment for them. Um, then I hit the orgs slash Shopify slash repos endpoint to confirm the GitHub token scope and successfully got back a list containing both Shopify public and private repositories with um, permissions to push and pull code, um, but not admin. But still, that is absolutely crazy. The ability to push and pull code to private Shopify repositories, um, big, that's a big bug. Um, so what that basically means is, you know, Shopify would have all of these different repositories. A lot of them would be public and they're meant to be public. They're meant to be viewable by the public. And then a bunch of them would also be private. And they might include things like the actual Shopify source code. Uh, they might include things like, um, you know, internal tools or internal kind of utilities and things that they use that are not supposed to be public. Um, and if you have the ability to um, push uh, to these repositories, which this access token did have access to, then it's possible that you could deploy code 
to um, to these repositories and then it would end up getting used in some kind of production instance or on like Shopify work machines by a developer or something like that. In which case you could build a backdoor into one of Shopify's private uh, repositories and then when it gets um, when it gets built and, and executed, uh, it might give you remote command access access on their machine, which can lead to all kinds of different things, including like completely owning the Shopify organization, um, you know, to a point anyway. Okay, so um, once they found that, uh, I'm, they, they basically, it looks like they, they punched out this report probably um, as quickly as they could. Um, I think this is the, this is the first the first thing that they submitted and you can see it's really short so they probably just couldn't believe their luck and um and quickly wrote it out and um the shopify staff um your wask replied and said can you kind of give me more information about this and um they replied again and they gave some more details um so they found it on a website and uh they downloaded the app like we've already been through they extracted it and then they found the env file and um they figured out that it had shopify it had access to shopify repositories um and that's pretty much it um after that they go through a little bit uh the the shopify staff asked for their ip address to aid in the investigation into it which would have been basically looking um to see who actually accessed the uh the shopify repositories using that access key um and they were probably uh they just wanted the the researchers ip address so that they could rule that out as someone who wasn't doing anything malicious because they actually reported the bug um so of course the researcher gave them the ip address and um then shopify replied with a $50,000 bounty and a CVS, set, a perfect score, perfect CVSS score of 10.0, which is the highest possible CVSS rating that you can give. Um, and yeah, Augusto was officially speechless about this bug, uh, about the payout, sorry. Anyway, folks, I hope you've gotten something out of this video. I hope you're inspired to go and find some other bugs and I hope you've learned a few things as well. And I will catch you in the next video.